This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be taking our snapshot mechanic that we created in a previous video and adding some new features to it. Right now we have the basic functionality to be able to capture an image from a camera in our scene and be able to export that to an image file. Uh, but now we want to make um, some new features to make this a little bit easier, whether it's for a player that is trying to take pictures in their own game, or if it's for our purposes of either for development reasons or for, say, marketing reasons, we want to capture some screenshots within our game uh, while we're working on it. So to start, one thing that we're going to need to do to make a lot of these features we'll be adding work is to make our camera persistent. Right now it only activates when it's actually taking the picture and it immediately turns off in that same frame. Uh, but that can be difficult if we have, say, a camera, our snapshot camera that is different from our player view camera. We don't really know exactly what the shot is that we're getting, and that might be because it's at a different angle, or we're using different you know, filters or different effects on that camera. So we really want to be able to see what we're doing um, consistently. And so we're going to create a viewfinder, and we're going to need to make our camera actually work constantly rather than when, rather than just the moment that we're taking the picture. So. As is often the case with um, software development in general, we are going to be sacrificing a little bit of optimization for user convenience, but it's not so much that it should dramatically affect the performance of your game. So to start, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our snapshot camera script. And in here, what we're really going to just be doing is changing all of these situations where I'm either activating or deactivating the camera. We're always going to keep it active now. We're, it's always going to be on. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have it set so that we have a flag that will, when we take a picture, the flag will be turned on, and then when the picture is taken, the flag gets turned off again. So it's the same idea, but just instead of it looking at is the object active, we're going to just have another um, Boolean variable, and we're going to say is that true or is that false. So let's first create that variable. It's going to be bool, and I'm going to call this take snapshot flag. We can even set it to false to start if we want to, although we are also going to do that within the um, awake method here because I do want to just make sure that it's false right when we start so that when we first start our game, we don't immediately take a picture that we don't need. Especially if you're you know, iterating and starting and stopping your game a lot, that could very quickly pile up. So we just want to double check and make sure that this is um, going to be set to false. So every time that we make this um, set active call, we're going to actually get rid of that now. Um, I'll just comment them out so we still have them for reference if we ever need them Oops, in the future. But instead of setting this to active to false, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say take snapshot flag equals false. And that's because, remember, in the late update call here, we're always checking right now, is this object active? We're going to be checking, is this flag true? And only if it is true on those frames will we actually take the picture. So next here in call take snapshot, this is where we're actually setting the flag to be true. We do want to take the picture here. So I'll comment this out as well. And we'll say take snapshot flag equals true. And then lastly, in our late update here, um, so after all other updates have run, we will actually take the picture. So we will say here, if take snapshot flag, you don't actually have to say equals true because this will return as true. And then finally here, we do need to make sure that we reset that flag to false. So we'll comment this one out last of all, and then say take snapshot flag equals false. And that's really all the scripting we need to do in this particular um, in this particular feature. Now we need to actually create our viewfinder. What's convenient about this is that we're already um, assigning the you know kind of the image that the snapshot camera takes to this render texture, and so we can use that not only to export to files, but we can use that for our viewfinder itself. We're going to be creating an object that will have a material on it that will always be showing what our snapshot camera is currently looking at. So we can create that now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to our player, because I want this uh, viewfinder to also be childed to the player, so it's always with us wherever we go. I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to say create 3D object quad, and that will automatically make this a child um, of the player. I'm going to rename this as well to viewfinder. 
And I'm gonna, right now we can't see it. Um, we can see it here in the scene view, but we can't actually see it in the game view because it's literally like right on top of my camera. And I'm just kind of looking through it, not seeing it at all. So I'm going to change these values a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move um, the position to about 0.3 on X, uh, negative 0.25 on Y, and one on the Z value. So now we start to see it here. It's obviously very big at the moment. I'm also going to rotate it a, just a little bit uh, because it's a little bit below and to the right now. I'm going to change um, the X and Y rotation to 30 degrees and uh, 30 degrees. So it's kind of rotating in and facing us a little bit more. And then finally on scale, I'm going to change the scale down to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. Now, at this moment, I'm using a perfectly square quad here because my render texture is perfectly square. If you have a different um, ratio, aspect ratio for your render texture, if you're you know doing something like three three by four or sixteen by nine, something like that, you would want your viewfinder quad probably to match up with that. So you may adjust your x and y values there accordingly. Next, we need to actually create the material that is going to use this um, texture. So I'm going to go into my materials folder, right click, create a new material. I'm going to call this viewfinder as well. And this we're going to do a couple things to. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the smoothness to zero so that we don't ever get any reflections that might kind of occlude what we're trying to see when we're taking a picture. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the albedo here, which by default is just what color appears, but we can also add a texture. Uh, we can do this a couple ways. You could certainly drag the texture file from the um, assets folder to this spot here, or I can just click this little bullseye icon and I can click on snapshot texture and we see already that in the um, viewfinder material here we see the kind of image of what the camera is capturing which we can kind of see the top right now of this cube right here. Lastly what I need to do is go to my viewfinder quad again, go to its mesh renderer to its materials and we're going to change this from the default material I'll once again use the bullseye icon, however you could also again click and drag, and I'm going to choose the viewfinder. Now when we do this we notice something a little bit funny that happens here, which is that when we have this camera right now, because our snapshot camera has this viewfinder in front of it, we get this sort of repeating almost uh, cascading image of the viewfinder being captured by the camera and we really don't want that. We want to see it in our main camera like our player view we want to see the viewfinder but we actually want the snapshot camera to ignore this viewfinder. We want to just take the picture of the scene at large and we can do this by simply putting the viewfinder on a layer that will be ignored by the snapshot camera. And so we're going to create that right now. Go to our viewfinder. I'm going to go up to layer and I'm going to choose add layer and in our very first kind of custom user layer here, I'm going to say ignore in snapshot. The name is kind of arbitrary, but in this case, I like that it's descriptive. Then we go back to the viewfinder again, and we will set it to that layer. So we'll set it to this layer eight here, ignore in snapshot. And lastly, we need to go back to our snapshot camera, and we go to this option of culling mask, which is just a set of all of our physics layers and we can also choose here, do we want to be able to view everything, nothing, and we can choose which layers get viewed or which don't. Anything that's checked off will be included by the camera, and when we uncheck it, it will be removed. So right now, if I now un uncheck Ignore and Snapshot, we see that in our snapshot camera view, the viewfinder disappears, and likewise that cascading effect disappears in the texture here we're still seeing the viewfinder here because this game view is actually the main camera, which still includes this, the um, viewfinder, but our snapshot camera now is no longer including it, so we lose that repeating camera effect. And with that, I'm going to quickly save the scene here and hit play, and we will see that now as I look around, the viewfinder, like right now is just reflecting the same kind of view as the player view because those are still aligned. However, if I were to say even move, uh, let me get this here, I could now click my snapshot camera and move it like up, or 
down. We could, you know, if we had an offset for some reason, maybe we had a drone flying around the scene or something, we would actually be able to see what our snapshot camera is seeing consistently and know when we take a picture exactly the kind of picture we're going to get. You could do this as well using like a UI setup where you had this as an image in your UI and then you would actually avoid the um, cascading image and things like that. But for right now, I think it was just as simple to show it um, as this quad and scene. And it's kind of nice to actually have it as sort of a, um, a diegetic UI where it's part of the world. Like say you actually were holding a camera and you could see on the screen what, um, what you were taking a picture of. It's kind of a nice effect. So that's why I chose to do it um, in world like this. But now this gives us this viewfinder so that we can see what the picture is we're going to be taking. And sure enough, if I then go and hit play and I look around and I, you know, say I like this uh, blue column here and I hit the space bar, we still take our snapshot. And if we go back to our snapshots folder and I hit refresh, we see that we still get the picture that we were taking. We just now have actual knowledge of what that picture is going to look like. Now that we have this viewfinder in place, we can add additional features like changing the effects of the snapshot camera as opposed to the main camera, and we'll be able to see those happening as we adjust them. So in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.